Good morning. I'd like to thank everybody for coming this morning. Today is the earth set of my sister-in-law, Rivka by Henry George. And as I was saying last evening, during, um, prior to the Chavrusa program, which we've had Monday evening for the past few years, and it's a wonderful, wonderful asset and helps the community grow. And I'd like to thank Rabbi Weisblum for starting that. Uh, the um, the jo my, Joel, my uh, Rivka by Henry George, had a wonderful, wonderful love and appreciation for Torah. She always looked forward to studying Torah. And I think it's very fitting at this time that um, we learn this mission in her memory. Uh, my wife Helen and I, every Saturday night at the Malabu Malka on Shabbos, what we do is, what we do is we learn a Mishnah in her memory. And one of the Mishnahs that we finished was Moed Katan. Um, and basically Moed Katan I'll give you a little brief explanation before I go into it, some of the Mishnayos. The festivals of Pesach and Sukkot both begin and end with holy days, which are Yom Tov, which, on which work is forbidden. The intermediary days of each festival are known as Kol HaMoed, or Kol HaMoed. And basically, uh, in Eretz Yisrael, the first and the last days of festivals are full holy days, and the Kol HaMoed are the intermediary days. And the name Kolomoi alludes to the fact that unlike the beginning and the concluding days, which, will, which have a degree of holiness so great that nearly all forms of labor are forbidden, the intermediary days of Kolomoi are relatively cold, ordinary, and the many forms of work are permitted in those days. However, there's a prohibition, and the definition, uh, there's a prohibition of certain items and because these intermediary days are a lesser sanctity than the first and the last days of the festival, this tractate, which discusses them, is called Moed Katan. And where does this, where does this principle of Kol Moed come from, and where do we learn this out from? The Talmud in Kagiga, Daf Yudka Damad Aleph, 18a, derives this prohibition from the verse concerning Pesach. It says, Sheshes Yamim Tokal Matzos Yom Shvi Yatzeret. Uh, um, six days you shall eat matzos, and on the seventh day you restrain, you don't perform work. And the Talmud expounds on this pasuk, on this verse, although work of some sort is prohibited throughout Pesach, only on the seventh day is there a blanket prohibition on work, and whatever prohibition applies to the seventh day would also apply to the first day, since both are specified as festivals. And the implication is that on Cholomoed, some forms of work are prohibited and some are permitted. And on Cholomoed, you see there's a lot of customs, whether we put on film or we, whether we don't put on film, we do or don't put on film. Sometimes people don't shave on Cholomoed, people don't go to work on Cholomoed because it is still part of the fog. And, and a lot of times you'll see this on Pesach and Sukkot. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first and last Mishnah of this tractate. And then I'm going to do a conclusion to see him. The first Mishnah says, I'll read it in Hebrew and then I'll read it in English. Mashkin beis hashlikan v'moed of shviz. We may water an irrigated field during Cholamoid or during Shemitah. Bein mi mayan shiatza v'tchila. Either from a spring that has just begun to flow. Bein mi mayan shalo yitza v'tchila. Or from a spring that is just not and that has not just begun to flow. Aval ein makshin lo mi mei hakshamim v'lo mi mei hakilon. However, we may not water irrigated fields, neither with rain nor with water from a cistern, being osin ugos la panem, nor may we dig ditches around grapevines. So basically, one of the categories on work of work on Cholomoy, davar haaved, is davar haaved. That means work done to avoid an irretrievable loss. And such work may be done in the usual manner, however, any excessive exertion, you can't go above and beyond, that has to be avoided. So, so if you have two methods that will accomplish the same end, the less taxing one is needs to be used. And uh, this is often confused with an irretrievable loss. It's a situation uh, often confused with an irretrievable loss is what is called minyas hareva, which is prevent prevention of profit. Denial of profitable gain. And Dabar Ha'aved refers only to an irretrievable loss which is tangible, but not to follow to capitalize on potential gain. And this mission that I just read discusses the relationship between an irretrievable loss and an excessive exertion, and prevention of profit is not a ground to permit work. So um, we may, that's why it says we may water, 
um, either from a spring or something that's already existing. But um, however, we can't start digging and doing walakas to create or bring about that water. Now what I'm going to do is, as is customary on the CM, is to go into the last Mishnah of, of Moed Katan, which is in Parakimo Mishnah Tess. It says, Barashe Kadashem Bachunaka Bachun Bachanaka Bukara Manosut Umetapakos Bazev Zahavalo Mekonanos. On Rosh Kodesh Kanakam Param, they may sing dirges and clap on any of these days, but they may not engage in responsible wowing. Nikbar Hames, Loma Nos, Loma Pachos, once the deceased is buried, they, they may neither sing dirges nor clap. Uh, so basically, the women mentioned in the preceding Mishnah it was talking about who, who, who were wont to sing dirges and clap their hands may do so if the festival falls on Rosh Kodesh Kanakar Perm. In this respect, these days are less stringent because they allow this than Cholamoid when such expressions of grief are forbidden. But they may not engage in wailing. Below the Mishnah describes what does that mean? What is meant by responsive wailing? It is regarded as a greater expression of grief than either clapping or wailing and is therefore forbidden. So you see here that the whole concept is certain things are forbidden, certain things are permitted, but it's, it, turns, it, it goes into degrees of excessiveness. Uh, and then the Mishnah continues, what is meant by dirges? Shakulan, Onos, Kiafa, they all lament in unison. Kina, and what is meant by wailing? What is meant by wailing? And um, that, uh, so it goes on to say, Shaakas, Midabaras, Vakulan, Onos, Akharash, and Amar, Valim, Madna, Benotekan, Nehi, Visha, Ruusa, Kina. That one speaks, and all others respond after her, as the verse states. And teach your daughters a lament, and each woman shall teach her neighbor a wailing. And it concludes by saying, However, as regards the future, the verse states, He will destroy death forever, and my Lord, Hashem will wipe tears from upon every face. He will remove the shame of his people from the entire earth where Hashem has spoken. So basically what it is, is it's concluding that there will, there will be no reason for lament or more welling since death will be done away with. Instead it will be time to sing new songs of praise to God. Although it is irrelevant to the subject of Polomoy, the Tana cites this verse because it is customary, you always want to end something on a cheerful note. So that's basically the concept behind this. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the customary um, conclusion that we do with the Hadron Aloft when we conclude a, when we include a, a Mishnah or we conclude a, a Gemara and, I, and, and then whoever is saying Kaddish can join me. There's a special Kaddish. The beginning is a special part and then it continues with the regular Kaddish or Rabbana. Hadron Aloft, Siddur Moi, Katan, Vadron Aloft, Dasan Aloft, Siddur Moi, Vadasan Aloft. Vanish the same mina, Seder Mod Katan Vila, Titna Shem Mina, Vila Vama, Hadain, Vila Vama, Diata. A Revna and Nilo Hinos Dibreso Seko Vofino, Fianca Bas Israel. Basically what we everything is done for the purpose of studying. Torah of Nia Kulano and Nata of Tetseno Tse An and Sedseno Tse Amka Bas Israel. Kulani Yodesh Maka Lalom de Torah Sakal Shma, Mary Veta Kakmini Mitzwasaka Tilam Hili. Um, so basically, it's the whole concept of this is talking about that we should strive for the study of Torah and not other things, not dvaram betalim, things which have no point or basically material items which are uh, don't have any end or meaning or purpose. We should focus on things learning in the basic English, not things which don't have any value or purpose. We all wake up to study Torah, and they wake up to watch sports, watch the Red Sox, things like different baseball, baseball, basketball, football, hockey. Um, 
Yira Tom of Naha and I love her, will have a tight shame, Shazatani, the Sayem, Sidar, Moi Katan, Kain, Tazreni, the Hatios, the Sidarim, Akhirim, the Sayem, Lumo, Lumay, Mitov, Harfava, the Shmor, the Sosa, Kain, and Kod, the great Tomator, Takabeva, that we strive to study Torah with love. The Scots called Tanam, the Tamil, the Kafan, the Naskar, the Sidar, Moi Katan. Ubachol has farm shalom and the tani yamad li ozari ozari shalot hamasha torah kedusha vipiyum he is ozari the zera ozari miata vevolam vikum bimish mekrasha katuv itki halachacha tancha osaf vetzach vetzach tishmar alacha va kisosa he tishuichacha kivi yibul yamaka yosef vachash nosachayim and we should learn from generation to generation we should pass this down the door the door all kimem. The Amina, the Smola, Osa, the Vakalo, the Anaidos, the Yama Yitain, Anai Barak, the Samas, the Vashalom. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go into uh, we're going to start saying the Kaddish, and then.